Okay, so in this video, we're just going to be looking at loops in C++ and a bit more into the, the assembly and how they work. And what loops basically allow us to do is that it allows us to execute or run a block of code to carry out a particular task multiple times. And the advantage to this is we won't have to repeat code, um, which will use up extra space, or repeat function calls over and over again. And there are various types of loops. So the first type of loop that we're going to look at is a for loop. And a for loop looks something like this. So we'll have the keyword for like this. And then we'll have a um, bracket right here where we'll define some properties about our loop. And the first property we'll have is some code to run at the start of the loop. And this is where we'll usually initialize and iterate a variable. Um, so we could have something like int i equals zero, for example. And it doesn't really matter what code goes in here, by the way. You can put any code in you want. And all, the, all this means is that this code will run before the for loop starts executing. And then the second argument that we have is a Boolean check or a stopping condition. And we can have something here like i is less than 10. So what happens is each time the loop is run, before the next time the loop is run, this check gets carried out. And the loop will only run again if this condition is still true. So again, this is a Boolean expression that you give here. And this gets evaluated and the loop only runs if this um, expression evaluates to true. And the final thing we have is a code to run um, at the end of each iteration in the loop. So this starting code only runs once, but this will run at the end of each iteration. So at the end of each iteration, what this will do is increase the value of i by one. And if we start off i at zero before the loop starts, and at each and at the end of each of the iterations of the loop, we increase i, we can make sure that whatever we put inside this body right here gets executed exactly 10 times. And we could just have something here like, um, int sum equals zero. And then we could have something inside this, like sum equals sum plus one. And finally, uh, yeah, we could just leave it there actually. Um, I might just get rid of this IO stream. So this is our main method. So what this will do is we'll start sum at zero, then we'll run this 10 times where we add one to sum. So by the end of our program, the value of sum should be one. And to give you an idea of how this exactly works, um, what I can do is I can compile this into assembly. So these are like the machine instructions that occur. And uh, we can see a few parts here. Don't worry about most of these. Um, if we go to the call main, that's basically this part right here. And if we look at what's actually happening here is we can see that um, this minus four right here is basically the location where our integer is stored. So we can see that zero is being put into there. And we're also putting zero into the I register, which is this part right here. Remember that I said this gets executed before the loop starts. And then we can see the check happening here. And what's happening is that this variable I is being, which is, uh, remember, this is located at minus eight, is being compared to the value nine. So this is checking is comparing I to nine. And then what happens is it says that if I is greater than nine, that's what this instruction means. It means jump if greater. And if I is greater than nine, what it says is that jump to L2. And L2 is the part right here where we can see that it just puts zero into the return register and it returns. So basically it's saying that if i is greater than nine or i reaches 10 in this case, or i is not less than 10, what it's saying is that jump straight over to this line right here and continue executing from there. That's why we have this L2 defined right here. And then if, it's, if that's not the case and i is not greater than nine, so this means i is below 10, then what it says is that it puts one into the sum register, which was in f minus four, remember? And then it adds one to the I register, which is minus eight. So this part is happening right here. And then what happens here is it, the instruction says jump back to L3. So when we jump back to L3 right here, we do this comparison again. Then we'll add one to the sum register, one to the integer register. Then we'll jump back to the comparison check again. And this will keep going on and on until um, I becomes 10 and then I is greater than 10 and then we'll jump right here to L2 and then the program will be terminated. So that's basically um, how a for loop works and how that will look like in assembly. So the next loop that we'll look at is a while loop and a while loop will look something like this. So we'll have the keyword while like this 
and then inside it we can give a condition and what happens is this loop will just keep executing um, until that condition becomes false so we could have a condition like sum is less than 10 like this and then we can say sum equals sum plus 1 so what happens here is when we get here this condition gets checked and if it returns true um, this code gets executed and then it just jumps straight back to line 7 right here and again it checks this condition and then runs this again then it jumps back here and does this again and again and again and again and the reason why we'd use a while loop is for example if we want to run code while a certain condition is true so in case of the for loop um, it's since we're using an iterative variable like i for loops are better when we want code to run for a specific set number of times like in the last um, in the last program we wanted that code to run exactly 10 times so we used a for loop there this time we want the code to run while sum is less than 10 so we want it to run as long as the specific condition is true and that's why we're using a while loop here and if we just take a look at the assembly for this if I just can just pull it up to the right and um, again we'll go down to the um, call main part right here and you can see again that zero is being put into the integer i sum register which is minus four and then we immediately have the while loop check so unlike the for loop we don't have an in integer i being declared or anything so again the sum variable which is um in minus four is being compared to nine and again we have a jump greater than so if if the sum variable is greater than nine which in this case would mean it's not less than 10. It says to jump to L2. And again, L2 is this part right here where we put zero into the return register and we return out. So if it if sum is greater than nine or sum is not less than 10, it's basically saying skip the next few lines of code and jump straight over to here. Otherwise, what happens is that we can see that one keeps being added to the sum register. And then what happens is it jumps back to L3 to perform the check again. So again, this happens, then this happens, then this happens, then this happens, and so on and so on, until this check um, returns, I guess, this, this sum becomes greater than 9 or equal to 10. And then it will finally jump and terminate our program right here. So that's a while loop. And the final type of loop that we have is a do while loop. And a do while loop will look something like this. So we can have do like this, and then we have while like this. So what we have is do and then a body. And inside this body, we can put whatever we want or whatever code we want to get repeated. And then inside this, um, so we can have something like sum equals sum plus one here. And inside this while part is where we put the condition to check and we can still have sum is less than 10. And you might be wondering what the difference between this and the while loop was. And they're actually very, very similar. The only difference here is that the check happens at the end right here. So in the while loop, the check happens before the loop execution. But here the check happens only when we're repeating before the next execution. So the advantage of a do while loop is if we want our code to run at least once, a do while loop is a better option because this will run at least once before this condition gets checked right here. And uh, you also need to put a semicolon at the end of the um, while, otherwise it will um, the compiler will get angry. So if we take a look at the code, uh, the assembly code for this, what we can see here is that again we set sum to a zero and then what happens is we can see that immediately we're adding the one to sum right here this part runs immediately the check doesn't happen yet and then we have our check happening right here where um i where sum is being compared to nine and if sum is greater than nine or sum is not less than 10 it says it says jump to l2 and if we look at l2 l2 is this line 11 right here where we put zero into the return register and then we return out and if that's not the case the next line of assembly code gets executed and that just says to jump back to um, L3, which is L3 is just this line right here. So again, it will add one to sum, perform the check, and uh, then it will then this condition isn't true. So because sum won't be greater than uh, 
nine at the moment. So we'll jump back here, do this again, then perform the check, then jump back and do this again, perform the check. And finally, we will we will have some being greater than nine. So then we'll finally skip this line right here, which tells it to jump back, and it will just return our zero and exit the program right there. So that's how a do while loop works. So now I'm going to just show you a little demo of this. So let's open this one up. And I'm just going to copy and paste it and I'll just walk you through what's happening here. So this demo doesn't actually prove that much. So basically we just have a for loop, a while loop and a do while loop. And all we're doing is um, iterating through the sum variable and adding one each time and printing out the value. So let's just go ahead and compile that. So g++ dot slash demo dot cpp dash o dot slash demo and then let's execute it. Okay, and as we can see, so let's just look through the for loop. So the for loop, we can have sum being zero, and then this will run exactly 10 times because we start off i is zero, and then we run it until i is nine. So zero to nine is 10 times, and we add one to sum, and then we print when we print out sum, we can see that it becomes 10. In the while loop, we start with sum being zero, and then as long as sum is less than 10, we keep adding one to the sum. And eventually, we'll manage to add um, one to sum 10 times until it becomes 10. And then it will eventually terminate, and we can see that sum ends up as 10. And finally, we have the do while loop, and the do while loop just says that um, increase the value of sum as long as sum is less than 10. And again, we start off sum at zero and we keep adding, we manage to add it one, like add it 10 times on, add one 10 times on until sum eventually becomes 10. And in the 10th time, sum was nine and then we added one and it became 10. And then this check um, will fail and then we'll exit out of this do while loop. And we can see that 10 gets printed right here. So yeah, that's basically how um, loops work in C++ and how we can use them.